Y'all young folks better tune in and know your history. No excuses now. Because the Keyboard Money Mike radio show is going down. Right now. Keyboard Money Mike is down with us. I didn't see myself, man. Come on, I don't look too handsome, but put me on the screen, man. Let me, let me, let me see myself with the man, the legend himself, DJ Red Alert, right here on the Keyboard Money Mike show. And I am just pleasure to be around this man the He's legend here. the man who birthed the nation listen it's my show it's gonna speak what i believe no offense to no one but the man who birthed the nation of hip-hop right dj red alert clap your hands y'all give it up for the cool dj red alert strong jay strong jay strong jay yo red it's my honor man what's going on mike how you been man yo i've been good i've been hanging and maintaining man been a while, man. Yeah, it's been a while. Like, you always just show me love right from day one. Like, you just have that support for me. But and I look at it this way. Why should I change? Ain't nothing changed but the waistline. Ah. <laughs> you can say that again. <laughs> <laughs> you can say that again, Red. That's Shoot. it, man. I got to go on a treadmill, Red. I got to lose some weight, man. You ain't the only one. I just slimmed down a little bit. I was heavier than this, but you know. Wow. But the blessing is that we still here. Yes, we are still here, man. Uh-huh. Humble as you can be, man. You got fans around the world, and I'm sure they're tuning right now just to get this moment um, to see what Red had to say next. Cause Red, you're all over the place, man. I'll tell you. You are a busy man. You are the like the ambassador of the music hip-hop, but I call you the president, man, because <laughs> that Agent Orange may have competition soon. All you need is that jet, <laughs> and you can just, you know, like book Red, any city, any town, because I'm talking about countries, man. They are going after after Red Alert, man. They all know you. Red, what that feel like? You know, before I even go into Red Alert today, I want to go way back. I want to build this up. Okay. Now, people want to know, where did Red Alert get his name from? Now, this is what I heard. So, Red Alert, you got your name from because you got the reddish hair, so they call you Red. Yes. And then I hear you were the best defender on the court in your high school playing basketball. Yeah, I used to play ball. Uh huh. I was known for playing ball. I played, you know, organized ball, high school ball. I did a year and a half in Hampton. And, um, you know, that was my thing. That was my love. You know, I came under the heels of my older brother. He was one of the first members under Mr. Homebill Rucker. And after ah. Mr. Rucker passed away, him along with Bob McCullough, Fred Crawford, and others, they continued the legacy of the Rucker tournament. So, you no, know, I came up under them, and, you know, I just do what I love. So your defense was that nice, Fred? They said, alert! Like, look, <laughs> when Red's on the court, they're like, yo, alert, son, alert! Red alert, that's where it come from. Well, you know, I figured to my man Dennis. Dennis is the one that gave me the nickname because, you know, when I had the big old red afro and skinny like a toothpick, and I was moving and doing what I had to do at the time on the court, you know, he just put that nickname on me and just stuck on me ever since. Wow, ever since, man. Red Alert, playing organized ball in high school. And then you started hanging around, fellas, that really gave you the opportunity to even have a sense of to be the legend that you are. I want you to share your experience with just the intro of how you met up with African Band Bottom. He has a lot to do with your career. Well, let's go put it this way. You know, in the beginning stages, I used to sneak on downtown to the discos. You know, putting on my older brother's clothes, trying to look like an older person. But even though they, they identified how young I was, and they saw that when I sneaking in, I wasn't into the girls, I wasn't into drinking. I was doing just fantasizing being in front of the DJ. So I was just standing there. And then I said, well, they used to tease me and joke me and say, come on, get, go on in, man. And they said, don't go by the bar, but they knew I wasn't going by there. <laughs> but they teased me and said, you, wanna, you want something? I said, nah, just a soda. And then that was doing like the Thursday, Friday, but on a Saturday, I was always going to a cool Herc affair. But me going to D. Wow. Clinton High School up in the Bronx, I got to learn about Herc. So that's when I was going to cool Herc affair, and then it allowed me to start, you know, getting more into the music. So I went to school, I took up, you know, um, engineering um, communication, and I got to learn about, you know, uh, how to read music. And I got my third class class. I came back here on a whole new slew. You got Flash. You got the um, L Brothers, you got AJ, rest in peace, Mario, rest in peace, and, Joe, and the Africa Band Body. So I started getting my own set, start learning how to practice on my own, and then I taught my cousin, and my cousin got better. He moved to Bronx River, 
Bam Bada got to acknowledge who he was, put him on. My cousin go and tell him, yo, you need to put my cousin on. My cousin go by the name of the original DJ Jazzy J. Oh, Jazzy J, that's what's up. Uh-huh. Well, so, so now, back back then, now listen, we built in here. Look, give me that clap. You heard that, Jazzy J, what's up? So <laughs> so we built in here, man. So listen to this. So back then, you DJ, now this is where Red Alert suffice, guys. Listen to what's important and what I'm about to say. Red Alert was DJing at a club called The Roxy. Why am I pointing out The Roxy? Because that day was a special day in 1982. Red Alert ah. DJ at The Roxy. Do you remember Barry Mayo? Barry Mayo, he came into the club. He was acknowledging what was going on under the behalf of Africa Band Bada, where there was a whole slew of us. Africa Islam, Jazzy J, Grand Mix of DST, Rest in Peace, Riz Kid, and I. And he went to step the band by and said, we want to incorporate what you doing along what we doing because they had to kiss master mixes. Because Mr. Magic, he just picked up, he just, just got picked up from HBI with the BLS. So now Kiss FM want to go ahead and apply the elements of hip hop along with they had, the kiss master mixes. Because they already had like Chef Petty Bone and Junior Vasquez and Chelly Bean Benitez and Tony Humphrey. So the first person he went after was Africa Islam. He missed a couple of appointments. The next person he went after was Jazzy J. He did it for a couple of months, but even though, he's like, you know, oh, they're not paying nothing up, but they didn't understand they was giving an exposure to do gigs and studio. So when he let that go after two months, they said, well, who you got bam dancing when they came to me? And, that's, and that became in like October 1983. Now they asked Bam Bottom, who you got? And yes. Van Bottom recommended you. He recommended me, but before me, it was Africa Islam right. and Jazzy J. Africa Islam passed it up, then Jazzy did it for a little bit. He but passed then it up. He passed it out, and that's when they came to me. Now, this is what's funny. They came to you to do a mix, right? Yes. And you did the mix, but then they like what you've done. They asked you to actually do mixes for their station as a permanent, and, you, and they had you doing mixes for... R&B and didn't have you doing mixes for hip hop. Share that experience. Well, you know, it's, that's a good thing. But by me going sneaking downtown to the clubs and learning how they was playing the R&B and the dance music and then coming uptown and applying with the hip hop elements, I learned how to sandwich it all together. So by the time when I got to the doing the mixes and I learned how there's a broader audience, you have to please a little bit of everybody. So you give a little bit of that hip hop, a little bit of that dance, a little bit of R&B, and the other obscure sounds. When I say obscure sounds, that you know, people would not expect for you to play like some David Bowie, some horn notes, some Madonna. I try to apply everything all together. Wow. That's what's up, man. And this, this, this is, well look, man, when you was on the radio now, I'm hearing you say, gee. <laughs> now, you should be getting residuals, <laughs> mechanical royalties, because everybody's been using yee. And I'm telling you, man, you, you can't tell me that you didn't even trademark that for, the, for they know they have to pay you every time they have to say it. Oh, wait, how many times First and foremost, it? it's a form of flattery, and I honor about that, and I don't worry about that, because you, you worry so much about the dollar, you're not worrying about life. And I just take it like that. Why should I go keep on chasing after what is it? If it's worth it, it's worth it. If it's not, leave it alone. So I'm honored about that. That's what's up, man. The humbleness that Red Alert always exuberated from day one is still here. Day one. So, Red, let's talk about where you get year from. Okay, so you was quoted saying you got it from um, Leg Frog Foghorn. No, no, Leghorn Foghorn. Yes, that was you no know, cartoon character. You know, he was like a, known as a chicken hawk. You know, remember during the era when we had the TV shows or the cartoons like the Bugs Bunny and, you know, all the others. There was that chicken hawk that he used to go and say, yes. Oh, that's yes. where it comes from, yes. Yes. Ah. And me and Pow Wow, one of the members of, um, of the Soul Sonic Force under Bambada, we used to always tease about that. And I took that yes, and I just nothing it. And it went a little longer than just a yes. Yes. Right, because that uh, Leghorn Foghorn was known, if I remember, for saying, um, are you paying attention, boy? Boy, are you paying attention? Pay attention, boy. 
Right? Yes. Yeah, that kind of, yes, yes, that's what's up. Y'all remember that uh, rooster? It was the rooster. Mm-hmm. Yo, but listen, let's get a little technical here. I'm going to provide you guys with some information. The leghorn, <laughs> right? The leghorn, foghorn. The leghorn is a type of breed of chicken. That's the leghorn. The foghorn is normally a sound. A foghorn is when they blow right before the train will come through or some warning to let you know yes. some you know heavy obstacles coming through. Be careful. That's where you get the horn from. Ah. So, yeah. Ah, that, that character, leghorn, foghorn, made sense because he would talk a million miles an hour, Red. You couldn't oh, even shut man. that guy up. You thought he was bidding for a minute. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you. Mm-hmm. So, listen. We're going to talk about DJ Red Alert when we come back because those of you know him for being a famous DJ. But did you not know Red Alert used to manage? Who did Red Alert manage? I'll tell you more about that when we come back. Holla! Let me see. I'm going to start off like this. Like this. I want you to listen to my dad. DJ Red Alert. Yeah! So check this out. Prop Master Metro. I'm going to give it to you on Sunday, okay? On Hot 96. Okay, that's the way it's going down. With the coolest legend, cool DJ Red Alert. Prop uh, Master Retro. What time the show, man? Every Sunday. 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. 97.1. You can also stream it on Hot 97. 97. Yes. Keep it locked. Every Sunday at 12. Prop Master Retro. 9 p.m. is going down for right. Hot 97. Uh, Cut the check. <laughs> See ya. See ya. This is Octavia, Octavia, and I just want to thank DJ Red Alert for all that he does in the record industry, all of his contributions, all of his support, and his mad, crazy style of being one of the best DJs in the land of living. DJ Red Alert, there's no one like you, baby. You rock, and we love you. Man, that's Octavia right there taking my love to the limit. Remember that track, Red? Pick up to my girl, Octavia, you know? I remember when she came out with that. You know, one thing I can say about it as a DJ, you learn how to use that as a weapon. You know why? Because you don't want to play duds. You play duds, nobody going to pay attention. But use ammunition like what she had gave me, I'm good in the field. Wow. Yo, I had on the show Red. Her voice is still the same, man. She just blew me away, man. Oh, yeah, no, she powerful. Big up to Octavia. <laughs> Big Respect up! To Octavia's in the house. So, I said before we went on a break, I said, Red Alert used to manage who used to manage, right? So, Red, I mean, I'm, I'm going to fill in, man, then you're going to elaborate on this. So, you used to manage the Jungle Brothers. Manage me, and you had your own company called Red Alert Management. Yes. So you had the Jungle Brothers. Uh-huh. You had Money Love, Money in the Middle, right? Yeah. Money uh-huh. in the Middle, baby. You yeah. had the Tribe Called Quest. Uh-huh. Oh, I was like, yo. <laughs> and then you co-managed Black Sheep along with the Violators. Is that right or no? No, 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 no. I had Black Sheep right off the top. And I'm going to tell you how this whole I elaborate. When I start getting involved in management, it's like you kind of like, getting on both sides of the field because number one, I'm in communication such as radio. So now here it is, you're doing management and you manage the groups that you're busy playing, but that could be a conflict. And I saw things was getting tight on my end. So what I did, everybody thought I was crazy, but I passed it on to Chris Lighty. Because Chris Lighty, who was the road manager of the Jungle Brothers at the time, he was rising. Ah. And he was rising. I said, yo, man, go ahead and handle this because it'd be too much of conflict. But, you know, here it is. People are going to come down on me like, oh, you just siding because you just playing your own groups. But I don't need that. So I just put it to him, and I keep moving on. Oh, that's what's up. Okay, that's how that went down. Correct. But you also broke in deals, too, because uh, you broke in deals for the Jungle Brothers. You, yes. That, mean, that means you negotiated that deal? Uh, yes. Oh, well. Yeah. Ah. Oh, so you know you had what we call leverage then. You well, understand how that goes. You got to do more than just zigga zigga. <laughs> 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 you got to yeah. do more than... But one thing I got to say I'm blessed because by the, the uh, couple years that I got involved with radio and communication, I was taking time learning how to network with all the different people, executives and different companies, if it's record company, promotion companies, whatever standards in, bu- in music business. I learned how to elevate to the next standard to start to represent and 
manage the groups, or may I say, babysit the groups, <laughs> you know, because that's exactly. what it feel like. But when I started seeing that it was getting too heavy for me, mm. and I still have a passion and love of what I'm doing on the radio as well as in the clubs, and I see what Chris Lighty, rest in peace, was on the rise, it's only right to you know, pass it on to in-house. Wow. So I'm going to break the alert to a lot of the fans, Red Alert fans out there, that probably didn't know this. But let me just break this to you. You remember the DJ name, Funk Master Flex? Hmm. Do you know how Funk Master Flex got his start? Now, let's talk to Red Alert because I hear Red Alert used to go on tour, right? He used to go on tour with the Boogie Down Production, KRS-One. He used to go on tour with the Jungle Brothers. But somebody needed to be filled in to take his slot while he's on tour. So on radio, Red Alert suggested let Funk Master Flex fill in. Could you elaborate on that, Red? In the first couple of years I was doing um, Kiss oh. FM, they used to have us pre-recorded. But then they move us down to a prime time slot where we would be on live. So when I started being on the move, doing all the conventions and tours and everything, the first person who used to fill in for me was Sweet Daddy Sammy B of the Jungle Brothers. But he had kind of disappointed me because he was not following up to you know his responsibility. And I know Flex used to be under the behalf of Chuck Chillout. Respect to my man Chuck Chillout. But then when I saw that, you know, they went over there at BLS and, you know, they let Chuck Chillout had a fallout with BLS, and then Flex was doing it, and then they let him go. That's when I'm going to ask the Flex. I say, you, I'd like for you to fill in for me. And that's how that thing became. And he did it for about a year. All right, well, even though he was on BLS, but Flex wasn't as big as he was when he got on Kiss FM. But still in all, you got to start somewhere, no matter what. Just like when I first started, I wasn't on straight up on Kiss FM. I was under the heels of African Islam on WHBI. Ah. So when I was on Zulu Beach and when African Islam was going out of town, I was filling in for him. So you got to start somewhere. Right. Let's, let's go to uh, the next drop. Um, I want to play the next drop, Buddy. Buddy from Intro. Let's rock that. You ready? Whenever you're ready, rock that. Hey, what's up? This is Buddy from the RB Group Intro. Shout out to Keyboard Money Mike. Man, you got the man on your show tonight. Shout out to cool DJ Red Alert. Ran into the brother last night. Man, it's like seeing the big man himself, man. I, I was just stuck in my place and stuff. And he's just as cool as ever, man. Shout out to cool DJ Red Alert. Yeah. Word, give it up, give it up. Right there, buddy from intro. Like, you know, of course I couldn't get the million people to come through. And um, play today because I got so many of them that I that I could play for you. I can but, imagine. But 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 buddy, now you know a lot of artists. You know, they. I mean, like you know, you can see how large they are. I'm sure, but they give you the utmost props. Red, how do you feel? Um, because I know you're humble at this. Because I'm sure you're gonna brush this off too. But let me see if I can just grab you a little bit. How do you feel to know that hip hop had a lot to do on your shoulders? I mean, like you don't have to take the, all the credit. I'm. A, Give you all the credit. How do you feel? Tell me about that. Well, number one, a lot of people know I was always honest because, you know, when you were on a major station in a prime time, everybody wanted to bring their records to you. I myself, I couldn't play everybody's records, so what I always now down to was sound good. And I know everybody wanted to get their record played, but I got to make a decision what sound good for the show. Now, I may miss hits, and I may, you know, may think it was his, but it wasn't his. But I got to make that decision. Because if the ratings are down, the program will go look at me like, um, we got to fix this. But they had so much belief in what I was doing after the, the, the foundation, what they stretched on me and let me go on my own, that I had to make my own decision. So I know I had a lot of hatred at me at one time. Where, Yo, man, you ain't playing my record. And then, you know, people were trying to throw dollars at me. I like, nope. I'm sorry, I, I don't take no dollars. And I'm gonna tell you why. I pimp myself, you're not gonna pimp me. Mm. Wow, you pimp yourself. All right. Why would you disrespect yourself? Speaking of pimp yourself, why would you disrespect yourself and call yourself a bum, right? You can't call yourself a bum. Well, you know, a lot of people take the word bum in so many different ways because, you know, we think the word bum because they always think of the downward. But, you know, I took bum and put it uplift. You know, B-U-M, Black Ultimate Man. Black 
ultimate man. When he told me that guy <laughs> about 15 years ago, Red said, black ultimate man. I said, what? Oh, he's, yo, that's unique. How you do that? Yo, Red, that was so ultimately dope. You took a negative word and empowered it to positivity. But well, one thing I always learned that when you were in the position to be amongst the, um, the audience, you had to learn how to command your presence and how people would see what you do or what you say. So I try to take the terms like props, prop master, bum, bum. You know, um, I just so right now, even to this term, I say the coolest legend for the length of time I do. So that's why I took, you know, that word bum and just changed it around. And then I say, you're a bum. Yeah, yo, yo, don't disrespect me. I say, you don't know what bum stand for? And then when I pull them to the side, I say, black ultimate man. Then they say, yeah, yeah, I'm a bum, I'm a bum, I'm a bum, I'm a bum. Yeah, 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 you right, you right. Yeah, yeah, yo, Red, yo, I'm a bum. But you know, I always try to learn how to present something, and that's all part of, you know, um, entertainment. You know, how to present it, how to gear and gauge for everybody to feel like they're a part of you. Yeah, Red, uh, you no, know, we got a call on the line, so let's put that call on hold. Take that call, but put them on hold for a second. For those who got questions for the man himself, the legendary, the birth of a nation, right here, DJ Red Alert. Call in DJ Red Alert right now, 718-213-4247. Okay, put that call on the phone. You online, say your name and where you calling from. Yo, Keyboard Money Mike, what's up, money? My name is Big Short. I'm calling from Mount Vernon, New York. Yo, first of all, you sitting next to the dude that autographed my kiss card when I was in 10th grade. That was real big. That was a big moment for me. But I got a question about beef. Real beef and hip hop. Yeah. One of the highlights of my childhood, listening to him on the radio, was listening to him and his crew on Kiss FM go back and forth with the guys from WBLS in New York. The Bridge War. They would take shots. One would call the other one Duck Alert. Then they would shoot one every uh, another shot next week. And I wanted to know that those professional beefs ever crossed the line and become personal. Well, number one, you know, I appreciate that, you know, you acknowledged that over the years, and I'm glad that I gave you that autograph on the kiss cards. Wow, you just hit me in the head with that one. But look at it this way. I remember the first time when Mr. Magic was dissing me, I, I, I posted the program director. I say, hey, yo, man, Magic is dissing me. And the program director started laughing at me. So I started getting mad at the program director, and he sat me down. He said, yo, let me tell you something. I understand. I, understand, I see where you're coming from. But keep in mind, when they dissing you, they're advertising you. It took me a while to understand what he meant by that, but what it is that you're encouraging everybody to know who he's talking about to turn down the dial to listen to me. So, you know, I never took it personal. As a matter of fact, later on down the road, even during the Roxanne, Roxanne before the, the um, Bridge War, during the Roxanne, Roxanne era, when Marty was, or even Marty or Sham was DJing with um, Roxanne Chante, I was DJing for Sparky D. We used to be on the road. And matter of fact, Fly Tire, their manager, used to be my roommate on the road. Oh, wow. So we was all gauged as like, you know, yeah, all oh, this is crazy what's going on in the air, but we all gauged on the road handling our business. Mm. Which later on, if you think about it and you remember, Mr. Magic, uh, MC Chan, Chaos One, and I got together to do a Sprite commercial. Oh, word. That's true. So after that bridge war, it showed that this was just business, but somehow as the year went by, it got personal and took the wrong turn. Well, you know what I think? I think you know that a lot of guys want to really prove their point, you know, and put the muscle into it and went a little overboard. And then you got your man's man that adds so much to it, you know, that wanted to, yeah, did it, and then, you know, one thing did to another and it got out of hand. But remember one thing, it's all about the microphone. You should not be offended by that microphone. You should not be offended by that turntable. When the, when the beat boys is on the dance floor, you should not be offended for what they do in dancing. It's all part of competition of the art. Under the art. Very good point. Look, we're going to go to another break, guys. We're going to close it out with the man himself, DJ Red Alert. But when we come back, Something has established 
with his name monumental what is that don't go nowhere because i will reveal this and red alert will talk about it with the closing words for red alert we'll be right back It's your girl DJ Coco Chanel on a check-in, calling a check-in with the coolest legend in the game, DJ Red Alert. You know, I've said for many years that DJ Red Alert is the most down-to-earth, humble DJ that I've ever met in my entire career. And that's a big deal to me because being in the music industry, you really don't meet a lot of humble people. (laughs) You know, unfortunately, you don't meet a lot of humble people with power. You might meet humble people on the come up, but when they have power, that's when you usually see a little arrogance or a little cockiness. But Red Alert has always been so humble. And I believe when I first met him was 1990. And he's the same today as he was back then and vice versa. Like he's never changed. And that's one of the things that I've always admired about him so much. Like I really, truly admire that about him. And of course, he's a hip hop icon. I mean, with all the records Red has broken, all the artists he's given exposure to, the new music, his talent as a DJ. I mean, he will definitely go down in history as one of the most important people not even just DJs, but one of the most important people to music, you know, because hip hop is is, is global, you know, it's it's one of the the biggest um, genres of music and Red Alert is a big part of that beginning part of it. So Red Alert is going down in the books, not only for being an amazing DJ, for everything he's accomplished, but for being an amazing person which is the greatest thing that I admire about him. So much love to you, Red. Salute. I have great respect for you. And keyboard, shout to you. I see what you're doing with your show when I'm back home in New York. I'm coming to see you so we can chop it up. I'm definitely coming when I get back. All right? Much love. It's your girl, DJ Coco Chanel. I'm out. Peace. Wow. And let me tell you, Coco Chanel, you know, let Coco Chanel you. be fine all over the place, right? Let me tell you something. First and foremost, Coco, I love you because she's a good, good person and a hell of a DJ. She's a hell of a DJ, but, you know, with her presence and her charisma, along with her style when she get on, you can't find nothing better than that. So I thank you very much, Coco. But, you know, I, I have came up, you know, in the right way being raised by my grandparents, my, my grandparents from Antigua, you know, West Indies, you know, so, you know, when you come up under West Indian heritage, you know, they, they straighten you out right off the top, <laughs> you, know, All right. you know, and you learn how to come across and present yourself. So no matter, and this go even for my older brother that was playing the rucker, my aunt, rest in peace, that used to play, that used to sing in, in our, as an opera at Carnegie Hall and all of us, we learned how to come across in the right manner, in the right perspective, along with our talent. Wow. Well, well, look, man, I mean, I get pro- Coco, thanks for that message. Um, and I know I was trying to get on the show, but every time I reach out to her, she's in this country, she's in that country. I'm like, when you still getting work out there? Co- Coco doing it. <laughs> Yo, I, I seen Coco doing it from a long time ago. And, you know, i never forget the first time we was all at a Power Mix Summit. That was a DJ convention down in Miami. 
And it was funny because, you know, she's very quiet, laid back. To do, but when everybody notice her and say, oh, man, she's fine. But, yo, she bad, <laughs> you know? So it's like that's a mean package all together. Pick up the Coco Chanel. Yeah, man, Coco, for those who don't know, not only was she uh, the first best-kept secret on uh, Kiss, F Kiss, uh, Kiss FM, she was also with the group... Um, King of Swing. Yeah, you know? King of Swing. Now your head to this. Not your head to this. Go oh. right. You know how to do that track? Oh, you did? I didn't know uh, that. Oh, I know. I used to bang it. Uh, <laughs> I used to bang that track. I used to look. Matter of fact, I just banged it not long ago. Oh, wow. Yeah, you know? Uh huh. Yeah, you know, I, I mean, I'm talking about the deal things. I'm out there red trying to make it happen. But if anyone know that, you know that for sure. And uh, this is why I appreciate you, man, because you always gave me that love. I don't care. Where I seen you at, you you would stop and acknowledge me. You would come over. Yo, keep on when you might be good. You all right? Like, oh, man, this brother took the time out. Hold up, hold up. Give me a second. You come and acknowledge me. That's my personal uh, remembrance of sharing that great moment with you. Let me tell you, you something. There's baby. something that a gentleman told me when he first I know that I started doing radio. You know, he said, hey, young brother, come over here and sit down. You know, he sat me down, you know, in the bar and everything. He said, oh, hey, you doing your thing. And then he told me this, even though I already knew it, but it's like a co-sign for him to say. He said, let me tell you something. There's 24 hours in a day. If somebody want a couple, want a couple minutes, you give them a couple minutes. It ain't going to hurt you. And I learned that from there. That's right, give it up. That's right, give it up. So I said to you guys before we went on a break, um, I said to you that we were going to come back and talk about Red Alert, something very monumental. Well, listen to this. When President Bush was in office, he had someone that we pretty much recognize and very familiar with, Colin Powell. And Colin Powell, because of his work, and he was the first minority to be in office with such high ranking position, they honor him. They honor him with a name, a street name in the Bronx. They Walker gave him Payne. a name, a street. Bronx Walker Payne. Payne. You know that, right? Everybody know that. I'm on a grand know, concourse. But what you didn't know is they also honor DJ Red Alert with a street name in the Bronx. Ah. Give your hands up. Man. It was an honor because I came in the same time as, um, you know, I'm going to tell you who I came in. I came in the same time with um, Valerie Simpson, you know, uh, right now Ashwin Simpson, and also Jack LaMotta, the, the boxer. All right. I came in the same before, you know, and it was an honor to be, you know, inducted into the Bronx Walk of Fame, which is up and down the strip of the Grand Concourse. Right, because Red Alert, I was going to say, people want to know, where is your street located in the Bronx? Because they want to go take pictures of that street sign, man. It's on the corner of 158th Street and Grand Concourse. And I'm honored because right in front of the building 840, which is the, the, build, the whole area that my aunt live at. So, you know, oh, got wow. family right there. Ah. <laughs> wow, that's what's up, man. Listen, so 158th Street in the Bronx of New York City, uh -huh. Grand Concourse. DJ Red Alert Street sign is up there. You guys can go and take pictures of it. I am honored to know that it's something very monumental, well deserved. We will never forget. And we especially have a lot of other different legends in hip hop that also got their name honored just as well. Yeah, right. Well, we're talking boy. about Red Alert tonight. Hey, no respect. I'm just, you know, <laughs> I'm just saying it for saying, man. You no. Know, I'm part of the culture, so I got to you know, say that. Yes, yes, Red. Out of respect, Red. You know, I'm just showing you love because uh -huh. this is real. This is real love. Like, I'm just showing you how I feel when it comes to a present of you being here on the Cuba Money Mike radio Thank show. You. That is just an honor, man. Thank you. So I'm going to say one thing before we leave, Red Alert, uh, before we ask you, uh, what do you want to leave a message to those who follow you for years, diehard fans? I mean, like, they will bust their tail to get across. But before we go there, I just want to ask you a question. You used to say this a lot. Fluck you. What do you mean by that? Say that? Pluck you. Pluck you? Yeah, you used to say that a lot. What pluck you? I'm going to tell you why I say pluck you. Because that was the name of a chicken, fried chicken spot. That used to be in lower Manhattan. Everybody used to always go and get the food. And I mean, their food was like on point. Oh, man. So every time, you know, you ready for that food, yo, pluck you. <laughs> Like, well, yo, pluck you. That chicken was on point. They had the best chicken. I don't know if they're around anymore, but I used pluck to love you. pluck you. You know, but I'm honored 
for everybody that been taking time listening to me. And matter of fact, this coming and, and later on this year, go mark thirty five years I've been on radio. I'm honored yeah. to say that. Thirty five years on the radio. At the same time, I'm honored to say that you know it's been in, I, in August be forty one years I've been DJing. Wow. And I know they say, you old. I say, no, 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 no. I'm well seasoned. Uh, <laughs> but uh, how often you find something you love to do and you make something out of it? When I look at a lot of people before me, or even the same time as me, whatever field they're into, entertainment, industrial, politics, and everything, they're still in the same position or in the same form that's probably longer than me and still sustain the time. That's what it's all about, that willpower. So, you know, respect on that. Man, guys, man. I mean, you know, we got to focus out. We got to keep it moving. Um, let it always bro broker like Coco said. A lot of artists. I remember when Rooney Todd uh, from Ultra Magnetic MCs and uh, Cool Keith ran down to a Red Alert uh, in Manhattan and Harlem. And Red Alert came out his door with his bathrobe on. And it's like, yo, Red Alert, you got the record, you got the record. This man... Like he has no, um, you know, that, that snot that, you know, I'm all at. Yo, hold up, man. You know, I get at you when I get at you. This man is humble. When he says he's going to do something, this man does it. This is what I remember, how Red would just take people, you know, by love. This man, man, we got to continue his legacy. Respect, man. man. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. The keyboard Money Mike radio show is going down. Keyboard Money Mike is down with us. They will talk about artist pioneers from the 80s and 90s hip hop golden era. It was all a dream. I used to read Word Up magazine. Y'all young folks better tune in and know your history. No excuses now because the keyboard Money Mike radio show is going down. Right now. Keyboard Money Mike is down with us. For more information, visit the Facebook page, the Keyboard Money Mike Radio Show, for details. <laughs>